Hello everyone, Doug Simonian over at New York Metro Weather with your latest video discussion. Uh, this video is just going to be about the upcoming uh, big storm for late tonight and tomorrow. I'm going to be explaining some of the technical variables that go into the storm and um, what some of the models are showing. Although I'm not going to go as in depth as I did in yesterday's 25 minute video. I'm going to try to make this one a little bit shorter. Um, and maybe a little bit more basic, but still with some explanation because I do enjoy uh, explaining the variables and explaining what's going on besides just, you know, the precipitation on the forecast model. So let's get started by taking a look at the current uh, infrared for the Southeast U.S. This is on the Next Lab uh, website. Um, and we can see that the storm is already exploding off the Southeast coast uh, with bright cloud tops rapidly racing north. And you see where there's more organized cl bubbling cloud tops is where there is a lot of convection for uh, strong thunderstorms. And what that does is it rela releases latent heat um, downstream across further across the Atlantic. And that actually has an amplifying effect to the pattern. When you're releasing heat downstream, uh, you increase the atmospheric heights. Um, we'll talk about more about heights in a little bit. Um, but that makes the pattern a little bit more amplified, the ridging and troughing on the atmosphere more amplified, which helps the storm to go um, further north up the coast. And this is one reason why the models have been trending northward, generally speaking, over the last uh, few days with the precipitation with the storm. Uh, but it's certainly very impressive evolution, and the storm will continue to rapidly strengthen over the next several hours into the next day. This is the current uh, winter storm warnings and advisories across the area. Uh, we can see that across um, central and southwest New Jersey into New York City and uh, Nassau County and most of Connecticut are under a winter storm warning. Further east where the winds could be a little bit stronger, there's a blizzard warning and also where there's a little bit more snow expected too. And the further to the northwest where there still might be some lingering dry air and thus few, uh, lesser in the way of snowfall totals, there's only winter weather advisories. Let's take a look at, this is the latest uh, NAM model uh, from, that uh, ran about an hour ago. This is at 500 millibar, so the middle of the atmosphere, and uh, the shading is vorticity, which is just counterclockwise spin in the atmosphere. So what we can see here is in the south, off the southeast coast, that's the main southern disturbance that is uh, amplifying right now on the infrared. That's this disturbance. And it's an impressive little ripple um, in the atmosphere. And we see that the wind barbs, like these um, little stick type things, these are the wind barbs, they are pointed from southeast to northwest in the south, in, in the, uh, off the southeast coast. That indicates an amplifying pattern where the flow is trying to push more from south to north and that helps moisture stream from south to north. So that is something very interesting to see going on. And as you scroll through time, we see this, this, the storm continue to amplify and get stronger off the southeast coast and with more vorticity. And when you get more vorticity, you get more spin in the atmosphere. Um, and the spin in the atmosphere is almost like a mini low pressure, you know, because low pressure is spin um, counterclockwise. So the vorticity is little embedded waves of counterclockwise spin. And um, that also leads to more blossoming precipitation when you invect that spinning into an area that didn't already have that spinning. Um, so this, the, the, the short wave continues to move north and strengthen and actually becomes its own closed off height contour in the atmosphere, uh, which is a, a, a very much an indicator that it's its own singular strong entity that is um, going to be blossoming with a lot of precipitation. And we see these wind barbs pointed from southeast to northwest, so you're injecting a lot of Atlantic moisture into the into our area. And then also, you're injecting that vorticity into the area as well, leading to more lift for precipitation. So very impressive evolution on the NAM model. And we you also see this northern stream energy diving down southward, which, which also helps to amplify the flow downstream. However, that northern stream energy diving southward also leads to a little bit of compression to the atmospheric flow. Notice this, with this trough digging in, there's actually more troughing moving in 
uh, towards eastern Pennsylvania and New Jersey as the storm goes on, and that's going to act to shunt the precipitation shield a little bit. So with where exactly that shunting of the precipitation shield occurs is going to be crucial to the forecast. We even see that the, the 500 millibar low, it tries to go due northward and then has to scoot just a little bit east, um, but still very amplified, but it scoots a little bit east and it gets a little bit compressed because of that trough coming in, um, but still very impressive evolution. Here's the GFS model, more zoomed in with 500 millibars to our area. Uh, we see the closed 500 millibar low uh, just to our southeast. This is um, tomorrow at 10 a.m. And we see a, a, lot, of, a lot of vorticity um, hitting Long Island, especially, and just offshore, and actually negative vorticity in New Jersey. However, look at these wind barbs. These wind barbs are due uh, east to west. So that's going to advect this vorticity into areas that have negative vorticity. So if you, when you're increasing this vorticity over a given space, that also helps for a lot of lift for precipitation, and thus you can get a heavy banding of snow um, in Long Island. But maybe on this map, this would be correct, more so western Long Island and eastern New Jersey and New York City and southwest Connecticut, and then dry air and subsidence further west in uh, northwest Jersey. Um, and parts of the Hudson Valley where there could be a sharp cutoff where the snow rapidly drops off in accumulation. Now we can take a look at the jet stream on the NAM model. Um, the jet stream is important because it, it uh, depending on where you are in the atmosphere, it can quote unquote vent. Think about a soda can. When you open a soda can, it releases a lot of air. Um, and all, because all that air rises out of the can and releases. Um, and be, and that's kind of a byproduct of, of lift, right? So when you are in the right entrance region, so the right quadrant of where the jet is starting, and also the left region of where the jet is exiting, when you're in both of those regions, that is especially um, characteristic of lift in the atmosphere because of what we call upper level divergence. I won't get too technical about that, but it, it's, it signifies more lift in the atmosphere. And if you look at the last several NAM model runs, the previous run had the jet further southeast. The previous run, well, the 60 run had the jet northwest again. That was an epically epic snow run. That was going to be, you know, that's too snowy. It's not going to, not going to be that extreme. But all the other NAM model runs were a little bit more compressed with the jet. But between this morning's NAM run and this afternoon's NAM run, the jet got stronger and further northwest. So you're able to get that area of enhanced lifting stronger and further northwest. So sometimes you have to ignore the verbatim uh, computer output for precipitation and just look at the jet stream and what it's doing because that's more telling of what's happening with the precipitation. <clears throat> Excuse me. So actually, if you look at this was uh, the, this morning's NAM model, we saw the precipitation, which is not quite as explosive, right, um, right off the Mid-Atlantic coast and New Jersey coast, uh, early Thursday morning into and into Thursday afternoon. It did blossom a bit, but compared to the uh, the run this afternoon, the precipitation was already more blossomed thanks to the jet, and the heavier precipitation, the very heavy precipitation, was actually able to shift well west. Um, so th that is certainly something we'll have to watch with the jet. And if that jet continues to trend stronger and more amplified, this heavier precipitation will be able to shift further west as well and bring coastal New Jersey, New York City, and Long Island at, at um, potentially some very heavy snow. We cannot rule out a ceiling of a foot plus in some of these areas if the NAM guidance is correct. There's really some impressive dynamics going on. But again, that little bit of compression in the atmosphere at that northern stream trough and the negative vorticity further west means there could be a sharp cutoff to the precipitation. Um, and also, if you get a lot of lift in the atmosphere early on in the event, you may get some subsidence further north later on as well. But generally speaking, if you are a snow lover um, from you know, the coast of New Jersey, New York City, and eastward, you'll probably be happy with the way the storm is going to evolve. This was the high resolution NAM model run. Um, sometimes this model goes a little bit overboard, but I happen to like it because remember how we were talking about the convection before that's uh, in the latent heat that's being released thanks to this powerful storm? This high resolution NAM model run is 
calculates the convection explicitly. It doesn't parameterize it. It doesn't limit the calculation. It just verbatim tells you oh, what's the exact convection. It doesn't limit itself. So since it's more knowledgeable about the exact convection, it can sometimes get a better read on these exploding convective systems. Um, though sometimes it also leads the, the, um, the storm to go a little overboard too because the convection can lead to huge explosiveness. But still, this three kilometer NAM run shows the storm 952 millibars off our coast. That would be record breaking for this latitude um, with extremely heavy snow moving up coastal New Jersey um, into the New York City and Long Island areas. Um, early tomorrow morning into the middle of the morning hours with a very strong band with potentially two to three inch per hour snowfall rates if this were to be correct and thus one foot plus snowfall amounts from I-95 and east. Of course this is one of the extreme um, western and snowier outliers so that's not our current forecast but it is something to keep in mind as a potential ceiling for the event um, so which is why this storm has been so intriguing to track because although maybe the explicit forecasts aren't that impressive, there is this ceiling of a three kilometer NAM of widespread foot plus totals. And based on the trends in the jet stream and of the vorticity maximums, um, it's not far fetched that this could be correct. However, that we do think that compression from the northern stream trough coming in will be a little bit more um, intense as far as sharpening that gradient and maybe reducing some of the snowfall um, from New York City and westward than what some of these models are showing. So it'll be an interesting forecast going forward. Um, this is the uh, three kilometer NAM model wind gust because with the storm bombing out to 952 millibars uh, to our southeast and, and cold high pressure to the north, you're going to get a strong pressure green for a lot for very strong wind. So this model is actually showing wind gust uh, around 40 miles an hour for most of the area, if not higher, along the Jersey Shore and Long Island, um, with actually wind gusts over 50 miles an hour, maybe even approaching 60 across a good portion of Long Island and southern New England. And the storm becomes very impressive and rapidly deepens. So when you combine these wind gusts with potentially moderate to heavy snow and rapidly falling temperatures on the backside of the storm, there's going to be record cold coming in behind the storm. Um, that could lead to uh, very high impact conditions. Um, but speaking of that very cold Arctic air mass, that's also a, more evidence that there could be a little bit more subsidence on the northwest side of the storm. Because uh, when you have such cold, dense Arctic air coming in behind the storm, that's that leads to drier air coming in, more so than maybe the models will initially realize. And that could lead to more subsidence in uh, parts of northwest New Jersey. But there's also the phenomenon in the atmosphere of what goes up must come down. So if, the, if right near an area of enhanced substance from the dry air could actually enhance the lift further east and that could actually mean even more heavier banding just to the east of that dry air in coastal New Jersey, uh, New York City, and Long Island. But of course, there is a chance that that dry air could make it a little bit further east into New York City as well. So that's why... Right now, I mean, my personal thinking is, you know, New York City uh, could get in the uh, five to nine inch snowfall range, but the ceiling is a foot plus. But my forecast right now for New York City is five to nine inches. Um, Nassau County, I'm thinking more along the lines of six to 12. Uh, Suffolk County, more like, you know, um, eight to 13, eight to 14, but the ceiling is higher. And then close to New Jersey, uh, especially in the southern part of coastal Jersey, you know, six to 12. And then maybe more towards Union County and uh, Southern Westchester County, a swath of four to seven, five to eight. But again, you know, it's, it's a pretty tough forecast with a sharp gradient coming in, which could eat, which could actually enhance the banding or mitigate the banding, depending on where exactly that gradient sets up. So, um, well, I hope this video broke down the elements of the storm well, and that it was informative. And if you enjoy the snow, we hope you enjoy the storm. And if you don't enjoy, stay warm and stay safe. And uh, please be careful on the roads. So um, have a good night. And we'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.